<clears throat> Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and welcome back to our tafsir class. We're doing the kitab known as Al Jami'u li Ahkam al Quran, which is better known as Tafsir al Qurtubi, written by Imam al Qurtubi rahimahullah, and we're dealing still with the tafsir of Surah al Mutafifin. Now we had read a uh, selection of ayat last week and we completed a portion of the tafsir. So we are continuing on from here, page 153 of volume number 22 of Tafsir al Qurtubi for, for tonight, inshallah. So without delays, let's begin. <clears throat> Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. <clears throat> So he starts out from this point here. He says, وفي, وفي ذلك, أي, وفي الذي وصفناه من أمر الجنة فليتنافس المتنافسون وفي ذلك فليتنافس المتنافسون That's the ayah that we're dealing with. So with regards to this, let the competitors compete. That's the part of the ayah that we were doing. So he says, وفي الذي وصفناه من أمر الجنة the, so with regards to this, that Allah has described of Jannah, Allah tells you, after Allah has told you that, you know, the uh, believers, they will be like this, they'll be reclining on, uh, you know, what people call a chase lounges, you know, that sort of thing, reclining in that manner, you know, they'll have all of this and the pure wine and everything. And then Allah says, Wa fi So for all of these na'im that Allah has prepared for a person in Jannah, let the competitors compete. In other words, compete in, and okay, like I mentioned last week, I have had done a short audio, one of my weekly audios on this topic of uh, in last month, probably if I'm not mistaken. So I put that in more perspective as to what it means. But nonetheless, it don't mean, you know, like what people do today, everything has become a competition. Uh, who can uh, read Quran better, make better azan to get a prize and uh, money and things like this. That is not the type of competition that they think refer to at all. <clears throat> that's when you turn the deen into a money-making racket. So that's not what is being referred to. But here it means that, you know, and okay, I mentioned the example I gave. Hadrat Abu Bakr radiyallahu anhu was always in the front of everything. Any goodness, Hadrat Abu Bakr radiyallahu anhu was there. And thus, Hadrat Umar radiyallahu anhu, not entering into a contract uh, a competition, uh, we're going to run now and see who's fast, not that type. But without Hadrat Abu Bakr radiyallahu anhu even knowing, Hadrat Umar radiyallahu anhu would try to outdo him. In other words, he does so much good, I want to do good, more good uh, even than that. Not to say so that I am better, but so that... I can come closer to Allah with more deeds. That's how it was. And that is what is meant by let the competitors compete. But in any case, let's move on. He says, فَلْيَرْغَبِ الرَّاغِبُونَ يُقَالُوا نَفِسْتُ عَلَيْهِ الشَّيْءَ أَنْفَسُهُ نَفَاسَةً أَيْ ضَنِنْتُ بِهِ وَلَمْ أُحِبَّ أَيْ يَصِيرَ إِلَيْهِ فَلْيَرْغَبِ الرَّاغِبُونَ You know, رَغْبَ, رغبة. With a ha is to make you fear, and ragba with a rain is to make you desire. So let those desirous desire, and so to speak. So he uses, he speaks now from an Arabic perspective. Uh, perspective. He says, anfasuhu nafasatan. Nafistu anfasuhu nafasa. That's the linguistics meaning. Danintu bihi walam uhibba ayyasira ilayhi. The term is used in this manner that I. Like almost like try to withhold it from him, and I did not want that he should reach there first. Pure linguistics is showing that when you are having a tanafus, tanafus in the context of normal, uh, normal competitions in this world, uh, if it's a race, you want you don't want that the next person must win. Also, shame. Let's all hold hands and uh, uh you know, uh, jog down together while singing kumbaya. Uh, that you, nobody goes into a competition with that sort of mindset. You go in with, in it to win it. 
I must be the one to be the right at, fr at the front. That's what a Tanafus is. You know, you, you run, you see he's on your heels and you push yourself to the max so that you can get there. I don't want that he must reach there before me. That is how it is. That sort of competition. But obviously, like I gave the example, you don't come now with matters of the... Uh, of the dean and you turn it into a competition where it is for the sake of show. When there's no ikhlas, it's worth nothing. Then you are tanafus into jahannam, but you're not coming any closer to Allah. So the entire point of uh, competing from a shari'i perspective, from a Quranic perspective, it is to do more good deeds, to do as much good deeds as can possibly be done so that you can have a higher rank in Jannah. In other words, everybody's heading to Jannah. But, you know, it's like in this world here today where with money, you earn, you earn, you earn, you grow your bank balance, you grow your house, build your house, you do whatever you want to. So in a like manner, you want to build your akhirah with more trees and more rivers and more palaces. And the more good deeds you do, the bigger your Jannah becomes, the more... Uh, you know, every time he says, subhanAllah, and a tree is planted for you. And that's why that hadith mentions that uh, Jannah is lush and green, but it's empty. And your deeds is what actually plants that Jannah. I think I gave audio on that topic uh, 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 in last year or the year before even uh, about planting your own Jannah. Because the deeds that you do, you read Surah Ikhlas 10 times and a palace is built for you in Jannah. Different ahadith mentioned this. He who builds a house for, for Allah, meaning a masjid, Allah builds for him a house in Jannah, Allah builds for him a palace in Jannah, as different narrations mention. So, you know, now you've got palaces. And you say palaces? Yes, you look around in the world today, look in uh, Turkey, look in India, and you find the various, pa in fact, even you can look in the UK, and you've got Buckingham Palace, and this palace here, and that smaller palace, and that palace, and things. So if it's one uh, king, let's put it this way, or one queen, and yet they've got many palaces. So the Dolma Bache in uh, Turkey, and you had these uh, different, different uh, palaces that the sultan uh, the khalifa at the time they had all of these sort of things so the point being the more good deeds you do the more trees you have the more gardens you have the more rivers you have the more everything you have so thus grow your jannah not like i say not competing from a perspective of I want to read nicer so that people can look at me more so that they can download my audios more you know not that sort of thing but do deeds for the sake of Allah so that you can come closer to Allah and build a better Jannah for you. But with all of these things that Allah has prepared, you do deeds that will help you there. In simple terms. <clears throat> وقيل الفاء بمعنى الى اي والى ذلك فليتبادر المتبادرون في العمل. He says another opinion is the fa fa this fa. فليتنافس المتنافسون. He says it's what the meaning of ila. Ila means towards. So towards this, let the competitive, let the in other words, let the races muta فليتبادر المتبادرون. The it means you know that it, again English not exactly the best word, but anyway, let the races race towards this. So, في المتبادرون في العمل. You haste in doing more good deeds. So that you can come closer to that goal. نظيره لمثل هذا فليعمل العاملون. In Surah Safat, he says a similar ayah is when Allah says لمثل هذا. So for the likes of this, فليعمل العاملون. Let the, those who wish to act, act. In other words, not acting Romeo and Juliet here. We're talking about doing good deeds. You know that deeds is the currency which takes you to this Jannah. So therefore, put in the effort so that you can get that Jannah. That لمثل هذا فليعمل العاملون. But let us move on because he has discussed it previously in another portion of the tafsir. Hence why he keeps it short over here. So we carry on. He says, وَمِزَاجُهُ أي وَمِزَاجُ ذَلِكَ الرَّحِيقِ مِنْ تَسْنِيمِ وَهُوَ شَرَابٌ يُنْصَبُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنْ عُلُوِّينَ وهو أشرف شراب في الجنة. Now he says ومزاجه من تسنيم. مزاج means to mix, and its mixture will be with تسنيم. If we take the uh, 
verbatim translation of the ayah. So he says, وَمِزَاجُ ذَلِكَ الرَّحِيقِ We spoke about the رَحِيقِ المختوم, the sealed nectar, as the book is known, you know, that uh, book of Sheikh Mubarak Puri, uh, famous one, everybody uh, had it, it got a, a, a award for it and all that sort of stuff. But anyway, the sealed nectar, رَحِيقِ المختوم, call it different names, call it by the musky water drink or the, you know, the uh, musky wine or the uh, pure wine, whatever, whatever, whatever. But nonetheless, so that رَحِيق, it is mixed with tasneem. So he says tasneem, it is a sharab. It is a drink which will be poured down upon them from above. <clears throat> and it is the best and noblest of drinks in Jannah. And there are numerous drinks in Jannah. There is what people they would call today ginger beer. There is a ginger drink in Jannah. There is milk in Jannah. There is a river of honey in Jannah. You know, there's the wine in Jannah. There's different, different things. And there is this drink known as Tasneem. So, he says, وَأَصْلُ التَّسْنِيمِ فِي اللُّغَةِ الْإِرْتِفَاعُ فَهِيَ عَيْنُ مَا إِنْ تَجْرِي مِنْ عُلُوِّنْ إِلَىٰ أَسْفَلْ He says, linguistically, pure linguistics. What is the meaning? Where does Tasneem stem from? Tasneem in linguistics means irtifa' something which is lofty. He says, فَهِيَ عَيْنُ مَا إِنْ It is a river of water تجري من علو إلى أسفل it flows from above going downwards in other words like we would say like a waterfall it comes from a top and it falls down so that is the linguistics he says ومنه سنام البعير the سنام وذروة سنام وذروة سنامه in that hadith Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم pictures it draws in a person's mind a picture of a camel and explains it the uh, various parts of islam according to the body parts of the camel and then nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam in that hadith mentions وَذُرْوَةُ سَنَامِ and the hump the peak of the hump of the camel is jihad so this is the same sanam where tasneem is coming from he says the sanam al-ba'ir the hump of the camel because it is the highest point of the body of the camel. So the hump is the highest, everything else is lower than the hump. The head of the camel is below its hump and all that sort of stuff. He says, وَكَذَلِكَ تَسْنِيمُ الْقُبُورِ When you're using it in the context of a grave, a grave is made into a sort of hump shape. And now, it's kubur uh, are not supposed to be having big uh, marble headstones and uh, little cherubs uh, on the side and all that sort of stuff or flat what in in today's world you actually find people putting turf on the kubur so it's made with marble around it and turf on top of it as if some little people are going to come and play a mini soccer game on top there or something of the sort but nonetheless tasneemul kubur the kubur has a hump shape to it Hence why it's using linguistics to show that tasneem al qubur means a grave in a hump shape. Now, if a grave was flat, you wouldn't have been using this word at all. Anyhow, he says, وَرُوِيَ عَنَ عَبْدِ اللَّهِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنُهُ قَالَ تَسْنِيمٌ عَيْنٌ فِي الْجَنَّةِ يَشْرَبُ بِهَا يُشْرَبُ بِهَا الْمُقَرَّبُونَ صِرْفًا وَيُمْزَجُ مِنْهَا كَأَسُ أَصْحَابِ الْيَمِينِ فَتَطِيبُ He says, Hadrat Abdullah radiallahu anhu, he said that tasneem, it is a spring in Jannah, which the muqarrabun drink from in a pure form. They drink pure tasneem. وَيُمْزَجُ مِنْهَا كَأَسُ أَصْحَابِ الْيَمِينِ فَتَطِيبُ He says, but the ashabu al-yameen. So you've got the muqarrabun, then you've got the ashabu al-yameen. Muqarrabun are those who are very close to Allah. Ashabu al-yameen, those of the right hand. The normal good people. So in other words, both are in a very good state. The one is just even closer. So the muqarrabun, they get the pure uh, tasneem. But the rest, the ashab al yameen their glasses will be mixed. So you'll have a little bit of tasneem with some of your uh, rahiq, uh, for example. Your rahiq in makhtoom. So you'll have your sealed nectar with a bit of a tasneem in it. So it's mixed. And that itself makes it even uh, nicer. You know, it... The rahiq maktum is already like it can blow your mind, so it tastes. But then with this mixture, you know, like people have cocktails, not to use these uh, evil words, 
uh, you know, is a word which brings about the uh, Najis uh, uh, connotations. But nonetheless, you know, like something which is mixed. So it is mixed with the sneem and it adds extra uh, wonder to the taste. <clears throat> وقال ابن عباس رضي الله عنهما في قوله عز وجل ومزاجه من تسنيم قال هذا مما قال الله تعالى فلا تعلم نفس ما أخفي لهم من قرة أعين so هذا uh, عبد الله بن عباس رضي الله عنهما commenting on the ayah ومزاجه من تسنيم amongst the different تفاسير he mentioned on it he says that هذا مما قال الله تعالى he says that this is this ومزاجه من تسنيم is one of those things that Allah Ta'ala has spoken about when Allah said, فَلَا تَعْلَمُ نَفْسِ There is no person that knows مَا أُخْفِيَ لَهُمْ مِنْ قُرَّةِ أَعْيُنْ What has been kept hidden, concealed, and prepared for them. It's prepared without their knowledge of it. Of the very, it means قُرَّةِ أَعْيُنْ From the coolness of your eyes. In other words, there are so many things, and as the Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam tells us, or at least I should say, it's a hadith in Qudsi, and Allah tells us, "أعددت لعبادي الصالحين ما لا عين رأت ولا أذن سمعت ولا خطر على قلب بشر." That I have prepared for my pious servants, ما لا عين رأت, which no eye has ever seen, ولا أذن سمعت, no ear has ever heard, ولا خطر على قلب بشر, no has it even the thought of it even crossed the heart of a person. So that is part and parcel of ma ukhfi alahum min qurrati a'yun. That pleasures that Allah has kept hidden for a person in Jannah, which we are told about so many things in Jannah. You know about it. But then there are so many other things in Jannah which Allah has not even told you about. You know, just to aspire towards the things which you have been told. It's like if you can get that, you'll be happy forever. But Allah then still keeps besides that other things that will make you even happier because Allah knows and you don't know. Any case, he says, وَقِيلَ أَتَّسْنِيمُ عَيْنٌ تَجْرِي فِي الْهَوَاءِ بِقُدْرَةِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى فَتَنْصَبُّ فِي أَوَانِ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ عَلَى قَدْرِ مَائِهَا فَإِذَا امْتَلَأَتْ أَمْسَكَ الْمَا فَلَا تَقَعُ مِنْهُ قَطْرَةٌ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ وَلَا يَحْتَاجُنَ يَحْتَاجُونَ إِلَى الْإِسْتِيقَاءِ قَالَهُ قَتَادَ Imam Qatada رحمه الله made the statement, the tafsir, he said that what is tasneem? Tasneem is a aynun tajri fil hawa. It is a river, a spring, you can say, which flows in the sky. You know, if you have a picture of the Milky Way in your mind, you know, when people back in the day, and I'll say back in the day, because when you get old and you see many things over the years, but back in the day, people used to have these drawings of the Milky Way the, in space now, and they actually turned the Milky Way into uh, like a sort of river of milk. Okay, maybe it was children's things, but nonetheless, the point being that, you know, like milk, which was supposed to be flowing in space. So, yeah, it's a similar uh, concept, which is, it is a river which is literally flowing in the air. It is the power of Allah keeping it in place. So, the, that Allah who made that the river can flow on the, on the floor without drying up or soaking into the ground. is the same Allah who can make that a river flow in the sky without anything keeping it up. That Allah who has given you two feet for you to walk with is the same Allah who will let you walk on your face towards Jahannam for those people as well. So in the power of Allah, nothing is impossible. So it is a river which flows in the sky with the power of Allah Ta'ala. And this river you know, in other words, it's floating over the heads of the people. And from this river, it, uh, it uh, let's put it away, it pours out from, from there into the cups of the people of Jannah. So if you've got a 250 ml cup and it's empty, then 250 ml will fall from there into your cup without spilling a drop. And it will fill. And if you need a hundred mil, a hundred mil will fall into your cup like that. فَإِذَمْ تَلَأَتْ أَمْسَكَ الْمَا When your cup is full, the water will stop with immediate effect. That's why I say without spilling a drop. فَلَا تَقَعُ مِنْهُ قَطْرَةٌ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ So not a drop of the water will fall on the earth. Literally, if you were to get 
22,000 drops of water from that tasneem into your glass, then 22,000 drops will fall in your glass and not one drop will splash or go missing or fall uh, uh, miss and you know anything of that sort, it will fall exactly where it is supposed to. So, وَلَا يَحْتَاجُونَ إِلَى الْإِسْتِقَى You won't even need to ask for a refill. You know, like... Uh, I need my bottomless cup of coffee, fill it up, you know, mark fall. It's not going to happen. It will fill according to the need without you even needing to ask for it. This is what is mentioned by Imam Qatada, rahimahullah. قال ابن زيد بلغنا أنها عين تجري من تحت العرش وكذا في مراسيل الحسن وقد ذكرناه في سورة الإنسان. Now the last uh, quotation he mentions over here is from Imam Ibn Zaid who said that it has reached us meaning بلغنا it has reached us through a narration that says that تسنيم is a spring which flows from beneath the عرش of Allah رب العزة والجلال. And this is mentioned in the Marasil of Imam al Hassan. And he says, We mentioned this previously in Surah Al Insan, so therefore he's not going to repeat and delve into it any further. Because, as is the standard way of the Mufassirin, when they've explained something once, they don't continue repeating it over and over and over. Okay, last piece of the tafsir here before we end for tonight, he says, it is a spring which the muqarrabun, those close to Allah, will drink from. He says, So he says, the people of Jannah, which Jannah? Jannah to Adn. Now, there are different opinions in this regard. So, you know, you've got Jannatul Ma'wa, you've got Jannatul Adn, you've got uh, uh, Jannatul Khuld, you've got Jannatul Firdaus. So, you know, you've got different, different, different Jannat. So, Jannatul Firdaus is the highest. Some would put now, like he says here, the people of Jannat Adn, because, you know, sometimes maybe it, uh, you find some people and they say they put it like a, a seven level per pyramid type thing but no it doesn't exactly work that, that way there are hundreds of levels in jannah but nonetheless anyway so you have uh, one which is known as jannah ma'wa one which is known as jannah adn so imam uh, al-qurtubi says that jannah adn they are the best of the people of jannah now is Jannatul Adn part of Jannatul Firdaus? Jannatul Firdaus. Is it a portion in Jannatul Firdaus? The highest level of Jannatul, you know, different opinions in this regard. But nonetheless, so these people of the highest level of Jannatul uh, of Jannah, they will drink it. Sirfan. Sirfan means pure. They will drink this a drink of Tasneem in a pure form. mizajun. And for others besides them, they will have it mixed. We did the, just. The just this uh, a moment ago in the on the previous page. So in other words, these people get the drink in its full pure form. The others get it mixed with the pure wine of Jannah. So that's what he says. وعينا نصب على المدح وقال الزجاج نصب على الحال من تسنيم وتسنيم معرفة ليس يعرف له اشتقاق وإن جعلته مصدرا مشتقا من السنام فعينا نصب لأنه مفعول به كقوله تعالى أو أو إطعام في يوم ذي مسغبة يتيما وهذا قول الفراء أنه منصوب بتسنيم وعين الأخفش يسقون يسقون عينا أو من عين وعند المبرد بإضمار أعني على المدح okay. So the, this is uh, not really much we're going to go into because it's purely uh, high linguistics over here. Why is it? Why does the ayah begin? Aynan yashrabu biha al-muqarrabun. Aynay yashrabu biha al-muqarrabun. When you're reading it with tajweed. <clears throat> As you know from the Arabic classes, by default, a word has to begin, or at least it always begins, with a dhamma on the end. Dhamma tain specifically. Something affects it and one dhamma goes off. Something else affects it. It changes it to a kasra or a fatha or whatever. So why does the, sin, the ayah begin with aynan? Why is there fatha tain on it? Why is there not dhamma tain on it? Dopesh, as you would say in Urdu. So that's the discussion over here. So it is nasab al madh It's nasab because of being praised. Imam Zajjaj, he says that it is nasab al hal 
من تسنيم in other words تسنيم is a spring that the مقربون will drink from so he says تسنيم is معرفة uh, ليس يعرف له اشتقاق there's no uh, other forms that is known uh, from it if you make it as a master مشتق مشتق master from sanam then ain is an, in a form of nasab as ainan because it, it is a maf'ul bihi now you've got maf'ul bihi maf'ul lahu maf'ul maf'ul ma'ahu you know different types of maf'uls out there but anyhow so he said it is like that ayah in surah al-balad but anyhow and he says, this is the قول of Imam al-Farra, that it is mansub bitasneem, that it is nasab, meaning it has a fathatain because of the word tasneem. So if we just go up here a, a little bit so you can see in this, min tasneemin aynan. So wa mizajuhu min tasneem. It is because of tasneem here that it's like the one ayah carries on, the conversation carries on, it flows into the next sentence, hence why. Aynan starts with a fathatain. That's what Imam al farra is basically saying. Wa'ind al-Akhfash bi yusqawn. It is, according to Imam al-Akhfash, it is linked to yusqawn. Yusqawna min rahiq makhtoom. So they will be poured min rahiq makhtoom and yusqawna aynan. In other words, the, it travels back over there. So some will be given to drink from the Rahiqi Mahdum and some will be given to drink from Aina Yashrabu Bihal Mukarrabun. That's what he is basically saying. Meaning you scawn Ainan, they will be made to drink from an Ain, or Min Ainin, they will be made to drink from the A spring, the spring of Tasneem. According to Imam, uh, Imam al Mubarid, it is Ibari Aani Al Madh. Okay, same like Imam uh, Al Qurtbi mentioned at the beginning. But anyhow, Long story short, that's the end of that tafsir. We'll end on this point here for tonight, inshallah ta'ala. The point being, if we summarize it, that tasneem, tasneem is the name of a spring in Jannah. An extremely high one, lofty one, purely from the linguistic perspective. It is something which is extremely great because after Allah had mentioned the great thing known as uh, the sealed nectar, Allah then still went on to give something which is supposed to be even better. Hence why Allah now mentions وَمِزَاجُهُ مِنْ تَسْنِيمِ عَيْنَ يَشْرَبُ بِهَا الْمُقَرَّبُونَ So that being said, it is a lofty spring in Jannah, the highest of the high, and we hope, inshallah, we will all be from those who will be able to drink from it. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. And that being said, we end then for tonight, inshallah ta'ala. Until next time, we end and we say, wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Subhanallahi wa bihamdihi. Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdik. Nashiru wa la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.